called Egypt, but uh, she's not even African. You know, this is, I think this has also plays into the fact that when outsiders are coming to rule the kingdom, like when outsiders are coming to rule the entire kingdom, and I feel like there is this also undertone aggression that how could, how could a black woman be ruling an entire kingdom over white bodies? Like, I feel like on this, like this Netflix, this Cleopatra scandal, there is this undertone, ang aggression undertone, that how could a black woman or a black body be, be ruling like thousands of people? Then you hear that oh, people will say, oh, it's not about the black skin, it's not because like she's black, she's appropriating the Egyptian culture or Egyptian history that it is black or black washings. And I'm like, you know. <laughs> I don't know, it just, like, from the video that I did before, I was like, it feels more, a little bit racist on both sides. I think that's actually it. It feels more racist on the both sides of the spectrum now. Like, from the producer side, if Cleopatra was actually not black, or even if she's racially ambiguous, if, but even so, if there is the historical evidence that she was white or she was of Greek descent or whatever, then perhaps the British stars shouldn't have. But who knows? Maybe they're not even calculating that it's going to cause an opera. Or maybe they are. I don't know. I'm not the producer. But then on the other side of the spectrum of like the audience that are watching this web, you know, you're appropriating the Egyptian culture, the Egyptian history and blackwashing. It's like, so what if she is? Why is there so much uproar about this? Because it seems more like when you bring out the fact that um, this is because of the character or the physical attributes of the character that play the Cleopatra in the in the movie or the docu series, then it seems more like this is racist on the both sides. Like both sides is saying that no, she's not black. You can't be using a black person. Blah blah blah. Whereas in the history of history and history of making movies, this has always happened. You see, from like um a producer that is not of a the main character's um ancestry or um dynasty or. I don't know whatever bloodline like no but how is this producer making this kind of movie you know it's like saying Jada Pinkett Smith cannot make a biopic about let me see a white um actor from history like Marilyn Monroe like say Jada Pinkett Smith um decided one day that she wants to make a biopic of Marilyn Monroe and you say that she cannot do that because she is a black ancestry and she wouldn't even know anything about Marilyn Monroe. Like, does that make sense? I'm an author. It's like saying that if I want to write about, if I want to write a story, a love story about a person that is from UK and I've never been to UK. I've never lived there even for a day. I've never lived there But it's like saying that like you cannot do that because you are not from this space Or you're you're not familiar with this space Even though if you can make a credible argument there uh, But then again, I can always go to the library and learn about this and this and it depends on how accurate I want to be. If I actually want to use the demographic of, of the space, or if I want to say that this happened in UK, but I'm going to create a new set of um, settings to set up my story. But then again, we're gonna come back to this Cleopatra thing. So from, from what I've seen and from the opera that I've seen, and especially when it's so loud that it's, the argument is only coming from the fact that this person was black and I'm like now there is no argument. I'm finding it really hard to understand what's the criticism here. Other than the fact that um, you're going to make this about Jada Jada Smith and that's 
the whole controversies that I've heard. Other than that, I'm finding this a hard time. And especially because, like, I guess the black people have always been, like, at the end of things. And when they come out like this, especially when they alternate history like this, then you have, like, this uproar. It's like this uproar of, like, you cannot do this because you're appropriating this. Whereas it has happened so many times, and so many times in in movie industries and whereby a white producer or um somehow you want to spin a story and use somebody of ambiguous um race or character to depict somebody of a essence of a inspiration to people. I think that's what hurts there. If you yeah I mean I really think that's what that's what hurts. Really, when you're making a biopic about this extraordinary person, I guess, or this historical figure that people looked up to, or people like adored, and like you know, you can you can kind of see, or you can feel some kind of connection there, some kind of good connection there, then if it doesn't resonate, or if it doesn't finally um, look like what you think about or what you perceive then you get hurt. So I think that's where it's coming from too. Um, and I think that with the for argument's sake, when people are like, oh, you feel if you use like an, a, another race to depict Martin King or Malcolm X, Mandela or, or other people like that, like how would you feel? How would you feel? For me, I, th I don't think I would be coming at you and be like, Oh, because they went. Or the reason why I'm angry is because the person that played the character was black. You see where I'm coming from? And I don't think the producers are saying that, or are they saying that she is black? But then you see this Cara Cleopatra figure that was from like 2000 years ago being talked about and people are getting fixed up about it and like the time in there like you you would think that people would have break away from the history but again egyptian egyptian history is very vital i mean there are lots of information lots of artifacts lots and lots of intellect there and that has been very useful in the present world and yeah i can see where that anger comes from so like we're trying to appropriate or take up credits but personally i would feel that i don't think i don't want to say it that way anyway that's but, but i don't want to say it that way in that is this cultural appropriation especially because again we have so many african black queens that deserve this recognition or that i think they deserve this recognition or that people should know about so this opera is imagine in the future if there is a if there is a, um, a biopic about the recent um, Queen Elizabeth II, imagine <laughs> and this kind of thing happen. Maybe in like 50 years, somebody will come up with, okay, I'm going to use a person of Asian ancestry to do the, uh, to play the biopic about the Queen Elizabeth II. <laughs> that would be, that would be really interesting to see. Maybe there will be an opera like this, or maybe there wouldn't be because Again, it's always somehow I feel like this always brought it down to the skin color. Like, why are you attacking the skin color? Like, for example, now, like, let's say if this, if Jada has picked somebody of um, East Asian descent to play this, um, this Cleopatra figure, would there have been upper? Would there have been upper? Like, would there have been, like, this aggression or this um, upper about this thing? Like, wait, would there have been? I, I think maybe even if there would be, it wouldn't be as loud and as aggressive as this is. There is that opportunity that the East Asian will be perceived more as 
closer to the white bodies than the Adele actor here. Imagine Nollywood, which is the um, Nigerian movie industry. Imagine if they decided they're going to do a biopic about Lord Lugard, the person that named Nigeria. Nigeria. And they decide to use black person. I bet the world will not know about it because, again, where is Nigeria? Is Nigeria that relevant to the world? Do people know about Nigeria? Against a black country? I'm sure people know this too. Like the categorization of people is the same as the categorization of um, countries. As in, as in the more the more whiter the occupant or the original occupant of the country is, the higher up. You get what I mean? As in, as in the portrays the portrayers of um, African countries as in like a dumb as a poverty impoverished countries too populated, too uneducated, too there's some like all those kind of stereotypes. But imagine if they decided to do a biopic, if Nollywood decided to do a biopic of Lord Lucard using a white person, I bet nobody will care. And even if they try to use a black person to cultural appropriate which I don't even think that Nigerian cares about, like. But on this note of all oh, this scandal, whatever, you know, one time I was thinking that what if Nigerian decided, or what if African gets into this wokeism that is going on, and they decided to, to be like, hold on a second, a white man gave Nigeria its name. And then they'd be like, no, no more. A white man cannot give us our name or the name of our country. We're going to give each other. Like, really. Like, Nigeria has been Nigeria since... Is this that since 1884? Is that, is that it? <laughs> I learned this in school. But I, I learned this in school in social studies. In GSS3. I mean, like, here is it, here is it. Lord Lugard created Nigerian 104 years ago. Here is the reason why. His aim was to conquer the region as a whole and obtain recognition by its indigenous rulers, particularly the Sokoto Caliphate Fulani Emirs, for the, for the British Protectorate. As between, like, Lord Lugard named Nigeria, Nigeria, and then there is this other name called Godisha, which I think is from this George Goldie, that's named the country, that Nigeria was supposed to be named Godisha. <laughs> George Goldie, the founder of the Royal Niger Company, which had its headquarters in Lokoja, Sir Goldie sold the Southern Nigeria protector, Protectorate land and people to the British government for 865,000 pounds in the year 1899. Like when you hear histories like this, then the the relevance that um, the white man had on many African countries, and then you see something like this with Jada Pinkett Smith docu series, Cleopatra docu series going on, and you'll be like, wait a minute. Imagine if this was the other way around, if it was actually a white man or a white woman that did this um, docu series, would there be this opera? And if Jada Smith doesn't have any controversies going around her that could even like fuel this aggression or hatred or dislike of her and the docu series that she made imagine if there was any of that will this also be a problem imagine if the executive producers was not iranian or was a white person or a white man or whatever which is still 
be like this. I'm pretty sure there are people or Nigerians out there that they like say, oh, so it was a ma white man that named Nigeria. How come that we're still going by this white name and let's choose that one name? How come? I'm sure there are people like that, but I haven't heard so much uproar about it to like, you know, break away from the white supremacy or the white thought or the white as in the build countries or the build African nations or the build the African continent. And when you talk about like being supportive of black creators, black producers, there's with all these operas, there is no support here. It's like, no girl, you shouldn't have done this. Thank you for trying to portray Egyptian culture or Egyptian ancestry, but no, you are not gonna do that. And I think that's where this is leading. It's like, I don't know. What do you guys want? What do you want? What do you want? On the surface level, I seriously think this is more about the skin color of the character that played the Cleopatra than it is about even the credibility of the series, which we have not watched. I have not seen. It's not coming until two weeks time, so... But I guess maybe we'll see, maybe it is of relevance and then we'll do this chatting again, I don't know. I do of um, whitewashing, like whitewashing, whitewashing here, and like you are in school, like maybe they whitewashing you and everything like that. But I've not heard so much about blackwashing, but this was like, oh, they blackwashing, like, you are they blackwashing, like, no, I don't think the black was like, just making, um, just making a person relevant, relevant to the popular culture. It's not using the black person that plays the character as in like, oh, it represents me, or I see myself in that person, or that was, that was how I want to be seen. Yeah, honestly, I feel like it feels more nuanced than, yeah. Arguments for why this opera was happening is because Cleopatra was light skinned, which comes to the fact that I think this is really about the nuance of like people will not want to, to see that themselves with or in the black figure or the black character or the black people or whatever or dark skin or whatever you want to think. Um, and I guess in some part of North Africa or maybe in part of maybe like in part of North Africa they don't like to be associated with the black skin even though they live in Africa and more and so many parts of Africa is dark skin. I've heard that argument that a lot of like maybe some parts of North Africa don't want to see themselves in the black skin or the black bodies or they be associated in ways with the black body. Again, this boils down to the fact that in both sides of the spectrum, the racism that's coming from like the docu series and like the cultural appropriation, and if they know that this is the accuracy of history and they didn't follow it, but then that has happened in so many. Hollywood movies and then you have the other side that is fighting about this and be like saying no you cannot we don't see Cleopatra as black because she is not black and she's white or she's light skin like yeah that is your problem <laughs> it's so funny like how we care so much about a figure that died 2,000 years ago. We haven't even talked about the character of this Cleopatra in the history. We haven't know if she was nice, if she was kind or compassionate or whatever, but she was strong and she was intelligent and she was this and that she was portrayed with. 
Yes, so very happy. Like, mm, no, she's this, she's that, she's a, she's light skin. Really, that's what we're fighting about. She's light skin. Really, that's what we are going to talk about. She's light skin. That's why I have to make this video. And I felt really sad that that's what we are talking about. Mm. She's light skin. She's white. But then I was like. I bet if you place this present society in that 2,000 years ago where this Cleopatra ruled, I bet we would not be defending her like this. I don't think we would, I don't think the people of the Egyptian will be defending her like oh, she's our queen, she's white, she's light skin, she was this, I bet. But we are at a safe distance from her, from and I guess people can form their own opinion about this person. But I bet that if we live in her era, I bet if we live in her era, in her regime, I bet we will not be this, this kind or this um, empathetic or this sympathetic towards how she was portrayed in Netflix docu-series. I bet, I really do bet that we wouldn't be like that. Why? Because <laughs> she's a ruler. And by what I've known, ruling in that past time is actually corrupted, just as this present time. So what are we fighting about, really? And that's that's really gets me to like, really? It's her skin color. Like from this argument, even like from so many comments, oh, I don't have anything against black people or the character being black. And it's like, then if you don't have anything about the character being black, then it shouldn't matter that the person that portrayed this historical figure that you adore or that you like so much, or that you revered with so much, is portrayed as a black person. Or do you just not want to see that it's a black person that is ruling in this kind of time, this kind of amazing review, or that the 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 character that you think should have been played by maybe Egyptian or somebody of Arabic descent or somebody of white descent was played by a black person? You know, I'm starting to think or to understand why. Idris Elba said he is an actor and not a black actor. I'm starting to see the reason why. Like, you know, Idris Elba ignited a firestorm on social media in February after he told Esquire UK that he stopped calling himself a black actor because it created limitations for his career. And then there was this uproar too, if you guys remember when, like, um, should Idris Elba be cast as the next Bond and there was this opera about it like how can he be because Bond character has always been I guess white or I don't know um, light skin and like seriously this is what this is feeling like and I feel like the aggression and the dislike and the hatred that is this Netflix this Netflix scandal is causing is even more um, ignited by the fact that the producer was Jada Smith. I guess you can't just be human without being human plus the skin color plus the money plus the influence plus the popularity plus this and plus that. The present world presents itself as in like it's not enough to be human. You have to be more than human. Basically you have to be Imagine if we all just see ourselves as human and that's it. Like, you're just human. You're not. You're just human. You're, you're not white. You're just human. You're not black or you're not yellow. You're not orange or blue or green. You're just human. Imagine if we start seeing each other that like there is no physical features 
to distinguish you or to remove you or to remove you from the from being human. You are just plainly human. But you know that aside. But you know what will piss people off or what will piss me off or what will piss many people off or billions of people off? If you if if you dare if you dare if you dare to describe or to portray not only historical figures, icons and religious religion icons in movies, if you try that. Don't do it. Even like even Isa, for like Isa and like the Jesus movies or Jesus whatever movies they do, like it is for it. I think it is a fact that you shouldn't be doing that. Like be portraying a story for a figure because there is a legitimacy kind of there, like the God legitimacy there for these specific individuals that don't cross this path. Don't try to portray them. Don't try to, you no, know, not portray. Don't try to like create a future or sculpture or painting of them because the line that you have to study histories and if you really need somebody to look up to in histories you gotta study it you can't be going that oh i'm going to use this person from different tribe and look up at them but then you can look up at people of different um ethnic background and still be inspired by them and you don't need to twist it and be like they are of me when they are not of you you can still see it that way and that i would say like from the what idris elba say that i'm seeing himself as a black actor or calling his, himself a black actor is limiting I would just say that it's not limiting. I don't want to see, I don't want to see my skin color as like inhibiting or stopping me or limiting me from opportunities. Even if the society make it seems like that or the, I don't know, whatever profession I'm in make it seems like that. I don't want it to, I don't want to see it like that. Because it's not. It's not. I'm not the fact that i'm not going to be doing everything there is room for people to be or to do different kind of amazing things so i don't think being a black actor is limiting or identifying or calling yourself a black actor is limiting but i guess i don't know i'm not an actor so i don't know his experience so but I, I don't want to see it that way. But if they feel like if these actors are actually feeling like it is that way, then we're in trouble because then we won't have movies to watch anymore. Or we'll just or they're just going to be recycling and recycling old stories that we've watched and watched. And then we have to rewatch it. Why well, imagine if we all just see ourselves or if we just see each other or one another as human being instead of like this is a black human and this is a white human or this is a light skinned human and this is a dark skinned human. Imagine who, who could, you know, whoever. Do we need that categorization? Do we need that distinct label to the label society to label people? Again, who come up with this stuff? Who came up with this stuff? Then I guess it depends on the meanings you apply to it. Because the meaning or the connotations that always refer to white thing or white people would be like so dainty, so innocent, so this, so that, so that. And then the meanings applied or the connotations applied to the black body is always aggressive and stupid and not intelligent and not beautiful, not this, not that. Like so many negative attachments. That seems unfair. 
especially when you can when people do it so often or so much that in an instant they can imagine or they can portray you as something that you're not and spread so much hatred in that way when it is not so imagine if we just see each other as human and not as this is a yellow human and this is a blue human and that one is and those ones are green humans and those ones are red humans imagine a life life as it is the whole scandal is doesn't make sense it's from both sides the person that's fighting that this is racist and the, person, the people that are doing the cultural appropriating both you all sound racist you if the other one is saying oh but why is she black why is she not like, why not and then the person doing the cultural appropriation this is what this is given but just see it like this it's a creative piece of art whatever she produces or perhaps produce wouldn't wouldn't alter the history that this lady isn't of great descent like and i don't want to say oh you should be happy that she chose somebody from a queen of egypt to but you know i don't want to say that because that sounds oof. yes in a new way we're going to learn who cleopatra is if i if i watch the series or whatever i'm going to try to watch it if i do i'm going to be seeing her not the first time not learning her story for the first time but still seeing what she's like and I hope they get the at this minute hopefully they get the character right in her behaviorism and they didn't twist so much and like you know, I don't know. But anyway, that's from me. If you like this, and I bet you do, honestly, if you do like it, just do comment, subscribe and what else? Comment, subscribe, like, and share. Yeah, if you do like it, please like it. Do. Okay. I'm signing out. Salam alaikum. Oh, you know, one time I was doing a research on Yoruba people. And then I found out that it is possible that some Yorubans or Yorubans come somehow from the area of Egypt. And there was this link to the language or some words in Yoruba that is used today that is somehow like that. Like, yeah, I was writing a creative piece and I was just, I just had to do some research about it and I like found some, um, some document that says that Yoruban, Yorubas, uh, they linked to Egypt somehow. Maybe they used to live there and you know, all these wars or whatever happened and then they come down to the west side of the Africa. Like the original, Yoruba ancestors were Coptic Christians who originated from Upper Egypt after Samuel Johnson and many other Yoruba writers such as Lucas Olumide, Tony Falola, Fanny Kayode, Afolani and many more have continued to associate the Yoruba origin with Egypt. And there is also this um, mention that, you know, back in those days, the, there are some Arabs that migrated from the Arab region to West Africa. Some people from West Africa that migrated to the Arab, you know, for like, you know, all, when those soldiers with each other kind of stuff, and they have to like,
put their deities or their idols in the or around the Kaaba or in the Kaaba. Yeah, there was that. There was that argument. Right? I don't know who knows who. Like really, who knows? Who knows? Somebody knows. Only God knows. <laughs> Do you, like who knows? Nobody knows. Only God knows. Don't mind me anyway. Bye bye. Stop having me. Thank you.